Hey guys, Thunder E here, and you're thinking, okay, I wanna build a high-end PC. Should I go with Intel or AMD? Well, this is the video for you. Now, before we go ahead and do that, let's take a quick word from our sponsor. So Smart Deploy allows IT to easily support remote work from home users from the cloud. Deploy Windows, apps, patches, and BIOS updates to remote PCs from your Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive cloud storage accounts to keep end users productive. Check out my exclusive free offer worth over $800 at smartdeploy slash board. Okay, so thinking of building that high-end gaming PC, this video is for you. I'm going to be comparing the Intel 10900K versus the AMD 3900 XT. Now, I could have gone with the 3950X, but that's such a much higher processor, 16 cores. This is probably closer to what you're looking at. So the 10900K is a 10 core processor from Intel, their latest high end, at least, you know, uh, consumer desktop processor. Uh, it's priced between around $550 to about $700, depending on where you buy it, or average price is about $600. Bucks. While the AMD um, 3900 XT is about $478 for 12 cores. So that's what you have here. Now, uh, big shout out to all the people who sent out parts for this build. I'm talking about ASUS, I'm talking about Seagate, Samsung for both the AMD and Intel builds. Definitely Intel as well for sending the, the CPU as well, and ZXT for the case. But when you look at the specs for both devices, I have both of the specs right here for you on screen. They are literally the same other than the CPUs being different. We're both running um, uh, 2080 Ti's uh, for both of them because we couldn't get a 3080. And besides, with all the 3080 snafus, I think you're okay with your 2080 Ti for right now and you probably can't even buy it. Uh, and we have the same amount of RAM, uh, 32 gigabytes uh, of RAM uh, from, from Kingston and from Crucial. And we have storage as well, which is about the same amount, you know, two terabytes. Uh, we're using PCI Gen 3 for both keeping it fair and balanced and not PCI Gen 4 for the AMD, even though that is definitely possible. But taking a look at some of the benchmarks with the kind of specs we have here, let's start off with Cinebench R20. This is where we see AMD truly shine uh, and compared to Intel. So Intel comes in at 6,212 and Cinebench R20 scores, which is pretty good, but the AMD trounces it at 7,185. So that's some really good Cinebench R20 scores. But again, benchmarks, as you'd expect. Uh, we also have another one from TimeSpy, where Intel, um, the Intel machine comes in at 13,530, while AMD is a little less at 13,421. So take those benchmarks as you will. Those are, of course, really high numbers in total, but we all care about the games. How does it perform with games? And to do our gaming, we're using a 4K monitor from LG. And you're thinking, wait, wait, Thunder E, it's got a 2080 Ti. Yes, I know. We're going to check out some games in 4K and 1080p, but this is a really good monitor. It's a 27-inch monitor. It's the LG 27GN950, 4K, one millisecond response time, 144 hertz. It's got G-Sync and FreeSync capabilities, so whatever you want to go with. And I like it because it's got some really accurate colors. When you're gaming on this monitor, it looks sharp. It looks great. Um, also has some really nice simple settings so you can actually go ahead and change those refresh rates. As you can clearly see on screen, uh, FPS supports 144 hertz. And you can also tilt it and put in, in you know, portrait mode if you want to. Uh, but I digress from that. It's all about the game. So let's check out a few games first. Now, starting off with the game that a lot of people like to see benchmarks for is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And when we look at the benchmarks of Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p uh, on the highest settings for the Intel AMD, Intel comes in at an average of 125 frames per second using the benchmark test, while AMD is 120 frames per second. So pretty similar, just five frames off, but I'll say they're pretty similar there. Now, when we move it to 4K, when we move it to high settings, uh, the Intel uh, machine comes in at 84 frames per second, while the AMD machine is at 94. So a much bigger gap with 4K gaming using this, of course, processor. So that's actually pretty interesting. Now, going over to Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is a game that really runs well on a lot of machines, but I wanted to see how it handles here 4K at nightmare, ultra, night, uh, ultra nightmare settings. 
and we see about roughly the same frame rate range for both machines. Uh, 4K uh, for Intel AMD, roughly between 130 to 175 frames per second for both the Intel and AMD machines. So that was nice to see that both of them handled this game pretty well. Now, moving over to the game that I've played the most throughout this, of course, uh, you know, quarantine period, I'm talking about Call of Duty Warzone. Now, Warzone is one that, of course, it's beta, so a lot of the settings are off here and there, but I wanted to check it out. And 1080p gaming on Warzone is where we saw the Intel machine shine between 130 to 150 frames per second compared to AMD, which is about 110 to about 125, 130 frames per second. So clearly there is a bigger gap here, 1080p gaming with a game like Call of Duty Warzone. While when we moved it to 4K gaming on Warzone, we're getting roughly similar, of course, frame rates. So the Intel machine is doing 66, to 77. Same thing with AMD, roughly around that 66 to 77 frames per second, um, which is quite interesting to see here. So when you look at everything together, you're going to yourself, okay, what, what what's what's the final answer here? So when it comes to 1080p gaming, the, the uh, Intel machine does a pretty good job and is slightly better than the AMD machine uh, in, in certain games, especially Call of Duty Warzone. Other games, I think it's just, it's at least the games I tested, um, it's marginal in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 4K gaming is where the AMD machine actually does more work and much better. We saw it better in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We sure it also do pretty well with Doom and of course it's comparable both ways. Now I think it just boils down to what you want and preference and also thinking about the price point for these machines. So with the AMD um, 3900 XT, it's priced at $479 compared to roughly around $600 for the Intel 10900K, where you're getting the same performance, honestly, for both of them, and even slightly better 4K performance with the AMD machine, depending on the game you're playing. Now, this will also change once AMD makes the announcement on October 8th for the new processor, which means this processor will actually drop down in price. So it might be a bargain tee for you to even wait before you build your machine uh, and maybe go with the AMD. But if you want to get that consistent 1080p, I think the Intel machine really does a good job there. But there you have it, guys. That is what you get between at least the current high-end battle between Intel and AMD. I will definitely do a comparison once the new AMD chipset comes out. I know you guys are saying, look, the new you know uh, generation chips are coming, the 5900X, which is rumored to be coming out. Uh, so I'll definitely do a comparison to uh, to this because we already have that here and we'll see what we actually get on the table. But if you have any questions, any comments, guys, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.